collecting over 2,000 ATMs. Um, we've got a sales force that is eager and um, we do have our challenges, um, especially right now um, in terms of being able to hire because a lot of people have had some blemishes on their credit and, and things like that. And so it's, it's kind of challenging all the way, all the way around. But we're kind of working through that. A um, couple of interesting facts about us um, is that we're the number one small business administration lender in Washington, D.C. and in Baltimore. So we thought that was a little interesting tidbit that um, uh, you all might enjoy knowing. Um, we're also number one, we have the number one market share um, for lead bank relationships in middle markets. Um, in again, Baltimore and, and um, northern New York, Buffalo, Rochester, those areas. Um, and that really kind of brings me to um, what we do on a daily basis. Um, we're a full service bank, which means that we not only do the checking and the savings accounts, the home loans, the auto loans, but we also um, do investments and we also sell insurance. And lots of times people don't think of banks when you think about insurance and things like that. But we are full service. We offer mortgages, reverse mortgages, first time home buyers, those types of things. And so the approach that we have as a bank is to really look at not just your checking account or your savings account, but you as a total package. So we know that if you come in with checking, nine times out of ten you're getting money from somewhere so once you get the money what's what do you do with it you know lots of times people will just stick money in the savings account oh it's safe but what are your goals you know how often does your bank reach out to you and say we're just checking to see how things are going do you have any questions those types of things and so as a bank we have um assigned portfolios and we reach out to our customers to find out you know how they're doing what's going on um those types of things. So um, as you're thinking about banking, please consider those things. Um, brings us to Banking Go for Business, which is one of our latest babies. Um, and that particular baby is a couple years old. And you know how two-year-olds are. They, uh, they have kind of little quirky thoughts and questions. Let me hand those out for you. Uh-huh, sure. And while I'm doing that, I have a question. How far west do you go? Um, I know you said in uh, Buffalo to Richmond. How yeah. far? We are actually only on the east coast. So I don't know if, if that answers your questions in terms of how far west. Right. Like, do you go to West Virginia? No. How We're not in West strictly Virginia. straight up and down strictly the east coast? Straight up and down east coast. Uh -huh. Do you have one more of those? Uh, yeah. Do we need any more? I think Everybody? that's it. Okay. Okay. So, our new baby, <clears throat> Banking Built for Business, um, has really helped a lot of our businesses. And, um, if you look on the very outside of that folder, it shares with you that we can help you save up to $1,000 right off the bat. And some of the things that we look for in terms of our customers are we ask ourselves, what is the value of the product that we're offering? Um, how convenient is it? And who's going to be there to help guide our customers in terms of the questions that they have so that these products can better help them build their business. Because the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to be concerned about your banking needs when you're out and about bird dogging or closing those deals and that type of thing. You want to know that you have things in place so that when that deal closes and that check goes into the bank that you're ready for your next deal. So those are the kinds of things that we have taken into consideration when this banking built for business product was put together. If you look at that center section, <clears throat> excuse me, there is a primary package that we have um, that we consider our banking built for business. 
It's the banking checking account coupled with the savings account, coupled with the check card, and with web banking. And those things are really important when they're tied together. For instance, you can have it set up so that your money is transferred from your checking account to the savings account if you're saving for your next project while you use your checking account as your operating account. So that's going to be the account that your money flows into and out of. But you can also say, well, I want to save X amount of dollars per week or per month or per every couple of months. And you can have that set up so that when that deposit goes in, that those funds are automatically taken to your savings account. You don't have to think about it again. You don't have to go, oh, God, I need to get to the computer to transfer the money, or I need to go into the bank to transfer the money. Because really, as investors, your time is really money. And, it's, and sometimes the time is more valuable than some of the other things that you're doing. Because while you're busy standing in line at the banks, if some of you still do that, um, you could be out doing other things. And certainly, um, we've taken those kinds of things into consideration. Yes. Do you mind if I ask questions? No, I do not. Because I'm just thinking of things as a business owner okay. that I'm sure would be relevant to everyone here. Okay. So. Identifying a business usually mm -hmm. means it's separate from personal. Right. So therefore, in order to set up a business account, you mm -hmm. need to have your EIN, your employer identification number. Absolutely. And your operating agreement. Or what, what do you require to open up this business account? Okay. There are a couple things. And that's a really good question because um, a lot of people don't know. So say, for instance, you have organized your business and you've registered with your particular state and you've contacted um, the IRS and you've received your tax ID number and you've gotten your articles of incorporation or your articles of organization. Those are the things that we're going to need in order to get that business account open. Um, if, your org if your company is incorporated, we're going to need the actual articles of incorporation. We'll make copies and give you your original back, but we've got to see the originals. Because, unfortunately, people have done some very um, interesting things. <laughs> so we've got to see, <laughs> yes. um, so we've got to actually see the original articles. We also need your tax ID number. Um, that's really important um, because you, you definitely don't want to have your social security number tied into your business. And I won't. Uh, address the tax implications because I can't address those things, but believe me, it's not something that you want to have uh, tied up together. Um, once that happens, we'll go on to the website of the particular state that you were organized in to make sure that there aren't any liens on your business or that you're in good standing. And so that's the third part of what we do. Um, once all of those hurdles have been cleared, what if you've just started and there's like no no activity whatsoever on there? Then there should not be anything on the on the state website indicating otherwise. So you just starting up will not hinder you from being able to open a business account, provided all those other pieces are in, are in, uh, are in place. Now I'd like to piggyback on that. Mm -hmm. Say that someone has been in a business, they have their account through m &T six months to a year, mm -hmm. and they have good personal credit, mm -hmm. and now they want to establish a credit card, mm -hmm. a business credit card, okay, okay, or a business line of credit, because okay. I know that both of those tools can go by properties, mm -hmm. whichever okay. is a very powerful way when you're getting started. Okay. Do you allow that? And how soon would that account have to season or that LLC have to season before you would give them a business line of credit or a business credit card? Okay, Th those are two different um, products, so I'll address them separately. Thank you. Um, with a credit card, the credit card will go through traditional underwriting processes. We do everything right there on system. And so, um, uh, all of the information in reference to the business, of course, would be input. We would build what's called a business profile, and we would also build a profile in reference to the, the person who's guaranteeing the business. So there would be, we would build a profile on the person, and we would also build a profile on the business or organization. And then those two would go through underwriting. And then whatever 
issues or concerns, or if there are none, then credit cards in the mail. If there is something that needs to be explained or whatever, then they of course would allow would um, contact us, let us know. Okay, this doesn't match, or you know, is the income right, or we need you know more information, you know that type of thing. Um, sometimes counter offers are done. Um, we can't do this, but we can do this. So it, it really just kind of depends on individual situations. Okay, that that's great because sometimes it, they weigh heavily on the person. Mm -hmm. Okay. Other times they weigh heavily on the business and say, well, we'll do it if the business has two years of experience, mm -hmm. you know, and two years of stability.